All right, y'all, let's have some fun. Wife guy alert. It is wife guy time. So um, Crystal spoke to or interviewed RFK with Sagar here. And um, she really, really held his feet to the fire on the issue of Israel. For those of you who don't know, RFK is hilariously dumb on the issue of Israel. From his perspective, Israel has done nothing wrong ever. That, you know, that poor little put-upon country is always victimized. It's a hilarious and totally ahistorical worldview, but nonetheless, he believes this to his core, and he certainly argues for it as vociferously as possible. But look, it just doesn't really pass the smell test at this point. Because of everybody has eyes, they could see what's happening in Gaza. If you follow the details day in and day out, there's no conceivable way you can defend what Israel is doing, unless you're willing to just put your hand up and say, I love genocide, <laughs> right? So anyway, he's going to try to mount a defense here, but uh, Crystal absolutely grills him on this. So let's watch and we'll break it down as we go. And specifically, the topic of Israel, obviously very much in the news right now. So President Biden's administration, they have... He's like, but now we have to highlight all the yeah. things that he believes. Yeah. Uh, but you have no problem with that. It is what it is. Yeah, it yeah. is what it is. Okay. Right. Um, let's turn to a little bit. Uh, I'm grateful for them letting me on when they did. Sure. No. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Take it. Um, so let's turn to a little bit of policy and specifically the topic of Israel, obviously very much in the news right now. So President Biden's administration, they have said that they have no red lines for the state of Israel and their conduct in this war. Do you have any red lines for Israel? Well, you know, the, the red lines are that, you know, you don't deliver, you do everything you can, which I think Israel is doing right now, to avoid civilian casualties. Let's just reflect on the fact he said one thing so far, and it is the most comically untrue thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I mean, the red lines are you obviously have to, you know, try to protect civilian lives, but I think they're doing that. I think they're doing that. According to EuroMedMonitor, the human rights group, there are now over 10,000 children who have been killed. Over 5,000 women. Over 20,000 civilians in total. Talking about over 90% civilian death rate. That's according to the more accurate numbers. And the UN is somewhere in that ballpark, about 18,000 dead Palestinian civilians. Um, even Israel admits that their best number is we killed 61% uh, innocent civilians, which is still abysmal. So even by their own admission, they are not following what you say is a necessity. So what does he do? Total denialism. <laughs> Bro, I think they're doing that. I think they're being really careful. When they bomb churches, and they bomb mosques, and they bomb hospitals, and they bomb marketplaces, and they bomb apartment buildings, and they tell people to move from the north to the south, and they bomb the south, and they bomb the road on the way to the south, when they do, do a total medieval siege and deprive them of food, fuel, and water, and people are drinking seawater to survive, and they're doing amputations without anesthesia, I think they are doing as good as they can. Despite everything I just said, I think they're doing everything they can. Oh my God, you're so dumb. Oh, this is so disingenuous. There's collateral damage in every war and they're fighting an implacable enemy. I mean, they, they, I, I don't think there's any country in the world that would go as far as Israel has gone to not invade Gaza. I think the Israeli military makes the US military look like Noam Chomsky. That's what I think. There's this, all this propaganda. They're the most moral army in the world. Yeah. So moral when you bomb children. It's so weird propaganda about that. They're proving themselves to be one of the most immoral armies in the world. Israel was being bombed by Hamas. Hamas took over Gaza. And Israel walked out of Gaza. There's no occupation of Gaza. Israel, the blockade, though. Well, there's a blockade because, because, God, because Hamas declared war on Israel and sent suicide bombers off, so they put up a fence. So it's their, you know, that's like a... That's like the guy who kills his father, his parents and then throws himself on the mercy of the court because he's an orphan. You know, for them to say that they're blockaded, they're like, well, yeah, they're blockaded. And not, it's not just Israel's blockading them, it's Egypt. Well, Everybody has a problem with Hamas. Um, you know, in fact, after the, after the 73 war, after the 67 war, mm -hmm. Israel tried to give Hamas back to Egypt. And Egypt didn't want to take it because— Gaza? The, I mean, Gaza, yeah. sorry, Gaza back to Egypt. Egypt didn't want to take it because uh, of the, you know, the high level of sort of religious militant uh, Islam that, is, that Egypt considered a threat to its own government. Uh, what, but let's but talk about Let me just finish. Sure. Israel, uh, Hamas took over in 2006. Right. And they immediately started shelling Israel. With bottle rockets that do absolutely no damage. And the reason why they're shelling is, let's not play stupid here, because they're being illegally occupied. That part is left out. It's left out that the bottle rockets don't kill anybody, number one, right? The, the civilian death rate is 
totally out of whack. There is no, like, parody in this fight. So, they're not really killing anybody, and also, you know why they're doing it. This isn't like, oh, geez, they just, they just hate because they hate, right? They're just, they're just all, it, just, they're just anti-Semites. That's the end of the conversation. Don't look any deeper. Don't look at history. Don't look at the occupation. By the way, even the point that he made about, it, well, they're not occupying Gaza anymore. I've, I hear this point so much, and it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The idea that they're not occupying Gaza. Yeah, they're, they don't have the settlements in Gaza anymore, but it's a total blockade, a total embargo. They control the food, the fuel, the water, everything that goes in there. They're is surrounded in, that's why it's called an open air prison, right? You can colloquially use the term occupation to describe that. It's not the same kind of quote unquote occupation or apartheid like system that you see in the West Bank. That's a little different, but it, the idea that you can't use the term occupation is absurd. It's like this dumb talking point that comes from the far right in Israel, which anybody who does any cursory, you know, look through the evidence would be like, oh, I think it is kind of fair to call that an occupation. They sent on average 2,000 rockets a year on civilian populations. And their, their charter and their public statements day after day are they don't, they, it's, it is, uh, it's against Islamic law for them to even negotiate with Israel, except as a ruse. It says that in their charter. A, um, the only satisfaction for them, the only goal, is to annihilate Israel and kill every Jew, not just in Israel, but all around the world. So Israel, instead of going in and attacking, you know, if, if Mexico elected a communist government and the communist government began sending shells onto civilian populations in San Antonio and Houston and say, we're, you know, we're going to retake Texas, which they have a legitimate claim to, we're going to retake it. Um, how long would it take us to go in there? It wouldn't take us very long. We would go in and we would do whatever it did, took to take out the people who were sending this child. And Israel, instead of doing that, Israel did something extraordinary, which is it invested in an Iron Dome, which is to— <laughs> It invested in Iron Dome, as in we gave them billions of dollars and we helped fund that. And we help arm them, and that's all like our money doing it. Oh, they did something incredible, taking money from us. I love this guy, too, because he's like— not another penny to Ukraine. Not a penny. Give all the pennies to Israel. All of it. Go, 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 go. Itself again, just to live with missiles. There's, there's thousands, tens of thousands of Israelis that have, on that part of Israel that have been raised in bomb shelters. Who would put up with that? There's so, nobody Bobby, in the no world. One, no one here is excusing yeah. the actions yeah. of Hamas. But I think you would agree that uh, one atrocity does not justify another. So how can you hold on? Well, but, but, how, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, how but, can no, you say but, though? How can you say? But look, calling it an atrocity. I, I haven't finished my question. Right, go ahead. How can you say? that Israel is doing everything they can to avoid civilian death when the civilian death toll, even by Israeli estimates, and this is the low, this is the best possible number you could put on it, is 61% innocent civilians, thousands of children, thousands of women. That's worse than the combination of every 20th century con conflict combined. So how can you look at that and combine with the complete siege of 2.2 million people and say that they are doing everything they can to protect civilian life? Okay, so let's just note this for a second. Crystal just put him in an absolute logic chokehold, bringing up facts on the ground. Watch this response. But what you said is not true. We killed, well, true. We killed 750,000 civilians in Iraq. She's talking percentage-wise. What? She's percentage talking percentage-wise. The, really? the, 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 the percentage of kill, the average kill rate in Afghanistan, in Afghanistan, Mosul, in those battles, in modern warfare is about eight or nine to one civilians to military. And you think that's fine? 80% well, civilian death? You're do I, I don't think a single civilian death is fine. I'm not a single, but when we went into Germany to get out the Nazis, mm -hmm. we killed 2 million Germans. We bombed Dresden. Which is why. And Cologne. actually, there's an analysis that just came out that showed the bombing of northern Gaza has been more devastating and more destructive than our bombing of Dresden. I would also say after World War II, that's why we put in place things like the Geneva Conventions, to make sure that we did as much as we could to protect civilian life. She's explaining like the most basic concepts to him and they're gonna go in one ear and out the other. She's like, there's this thing called the Geneva Conventions and there's this thing called the Nuremberg Tribunal and now we have international law and now we've decided collectively that war crimes are bad. Do you agree? And of course, of course, he's like, bro, not even true, bro. Not even. She, he's going to object to another thing, which is like, just, he's he's chugging stupid juice to object to, it's about the siege, like, she's like, well, they're doing a, a medieval siege that's taking food, fuel, and water from over two million people, innocent civilians, and he's going to be like, I, that's not, no, that's not happening. 
What? <laughs> what are you talking? God, there's no way out of this. There's no way out of this, but he tries. He tries so hard. Guys, I hate to say it, but this is part of my thinking on this. You know, he knew Jeffrey Epstein. He was on his plane twice. There's some decent evidence that Jeffrey Epstein was Mossad. What the fuck does the government of Israel have on this man? For him to be their number one, rah, rah, genocide, rah, rah, ethnic cleansing. Israel's done nothing wrong. They're like the Boy Scouts. They're the Boy Scouts. The Washington Post, we can put this up on the screen, guys. This is the second element. R2. The Washington Post just reported that Israel dropped U.S. supplied white phosphorus in an attack in Lebanon. In they did it. They did that really humanitarianly, Crystal. When they dropped the white phosphorus on civilian population uh, populations, which is a war crime, they meant it very humanitarianly in a hunt for Hamas kind of way, even though there is no Hamas in Lebanon. A way that is inconsistent with the laws of war, directly impacting a civilian population. Are these, now you might say, look, we, maybe the report's in dispute. Maybe we need to go and investigate. But is this or any other of Israeli conduct in this war, is this something that you think should be investigated um, for potential violations of international law? Again, if Israel dropped white phosphorus on civilian populations illegally, mm -hmm. then they should be prosecuted for war crimes. Yeah. But I don't think there's strong evidence that they've done that in <laughs> Here's this thing that we have verified from 17 different news agencies and we have video of and we have direct evidence of and we have people that are injured as a result of it and uh, this war crime is indeed a war crime and it is bad. What say you? It, if that happens, it was, it was bad, but I actually don't think that happened. There, it's just so embarrassing. It's so obvious. It's motivated reasoning. He's working backwards from his conclusion. So when she puts him in a logic chokehold, he just has to try to weasel his way out of it by being like, actually, have you considered no? 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 Absolutely denies it. There is a legal, there are legal ways to use white phosphorus because it's used, uh, you know. <laughs> Bro, there's legal ways to use white phosphorus and stuff. Sometimes the war crimes aren't even all that war crimey, bro. Have you considered that? <laughs> Oh, that's so, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Could you imagine him talking about it like this if it was Ukraine that used the white phosphorus? I, my guess is his tune would change a little bit. In war, which is uh, as a concealment. Mm -hmm. And Israel says that's what it's doing. Here's what Israel has done. Israel has made calls people before they bomb them. Nobody else in the world does that. <laughs> it's, it's made 20,000 live calls. So somebody, an Arab speaking IDF member, who calls the landlord, they have the telephone numbers of everybody in Gaza. Now, there's a lot of connectivity problems, so they can't always- They barely sell access oh, right now. Let me finish. There's, they've made 20,000 live calls with people telling, here's what's gonna happen, you need to move out. In your neighborhood, on your building, they've sent 1.2 million robocalls. They've sent 1.2 million pamphlets. The pamphlets are cut, color coded for date and for time so that you don't see an old pamphlet and say, oh, this won't apply to me. So people know when, they're, when that building is gonna get bombed. And they do something nobody else in the world does because they invented it, which is they send in roof knockers, which is a projectile that hits the roof two hours before they bomb the building to warn the. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to send like a mini bomb to bomb your house before I send the big bomb to blow up your house. So at least I'm telling you that I'm going to destroy your house and you should get out and move somewhere else where I will also proceed to bomb later on. But that's just minor details, bro. Are, why, why don't you view me as like Gandhi here? Oh. Uh the people in that building to get out because they're going to bomb it. In, in t warning the civilians, they're also warning Hamas. And so it makes it much more difficult. And, you know, the fact um, there's many, many nations in the world that would just go and flatten the whole place, because which Israel could do. <laughs> Whereas Israel has only already flattened half of it in a month and a half, and they're in the process of doing the second half of it. But let's not look at that. Minor details. A lot of places would have just nuked it. Israel never considered, oh, what's that? There's three or four different top Israeli government officials who were floating nuke in Gaza as well? Okay. All right, never mind. <laughs> it, it doesn't have to go in there and put IDF soldiers at risk in hand-to-hand -hand combat. This is Hamas's, you know, Hamas has made a stand. They're putting civilians in the way. What is Israel supposed to do? We can't leave Hamas in there. But Bobby, I don't think we should accept that from any state, Israel well, how, or any uh, other. And I mean, they, they have rendered, so would, would you, oh, no, 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 no. They've uh, rendered Gaza City uninhabitable at this point. And there's been reports documenting that some of the procedures that you're talking about 
that they used in previous wars, they're not using this time. They've emphasized this attack on quote unquote power targets, which are things like civilian infrastructure and high rise apartments buildings, not to get Hamas, but to create a quote shock in the civilian population. In addition, yeah, we have a term for that. It's called terror bombing. That's their strategy. 972 Magazine came out with that detailed report the other day, laying that out in specific terms. As I mentioned before, you have a collective punishment of 2.2 million people who are having their access to water, food, fuel, medicine blocked right now by Israel. Um, this also appears to be in violation of the Geneva Conventions. Well, Do you it, think it, that it's acceptable to impose a siege on the entire civilian population it, in Gaza? It, if there's a violation, first of all, I don't think that's happening. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can't. Crystal has the patience of a saint, of an absolute angel here. Because she's just she brings up these things that everybody knows at this late date are true. The Israeli government says it's true. We have direct evidence of it. This is not in dispute. And he's just like, I no, that's not true. It's okay. Look, what this shows is this man is committed to playing incredibly fast and loose with facts. For him to deny these incredibly basic and obvious points, which have been demonstrated to be the reality a month ago. And he's just like, no, he just swats it aside. It shows you perhaps he uses motivated reasoning, not just in this area, perhaps in many other areas as well. Second of all, if it violates the Geneva Convention or if they're deliberately any, at any point, anybody is deliberately targeting civilians, they should be prosecuted and they should be jailed and the key should be thrown away. Mm. But I, you know. All right, well, I hate to tell you, RFK, based on what you just said, <laughs> Netanyahu's got to go, Itamar ben gavir has got to go, basically the entire Likud party's got to go, in the far-right coalition, the party to their right, they got to go, those religious fundamentalists got to go, the illegal Israeli settlers got to go, they all hit war crimes on top of war crimes, within war crimes, with a topping of war crimes, is what those people do. So he, he said, well, I guess, I mean, yeah, if that's the case, but he's going to go, I mean, no, but they didn't actually, the thing that we know they did, and that they said they did, and that has been proven that they did, they didn't actually do that thing. People say this. But, you know, I don't see any proof of that. <laughs> we right <laughs> now, we, people, that people are deliberately, uh, deliberately targeting yeah. civilians. But the, but the government announced they were doing a complete siege on the 2.2 million. Yeah, okay, police. you're talking about the, you know, the, 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 siege. Set, yeah, the, the, the siege. Crystal's face is like, what the fuck is wrong with you? She's like, what do you, like, everybody knows this. You don't know this at this late date, or it's that you know it, but you don't care because you're pro-Israel. You want to swat it aside and pretend like it's not real. You're basically going with the strategy of like, no, 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 I don't see it. No, 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 no. For 10 years, we did collective punishment of Iraq. We actually I'm killed. I'm not trying to justify yeah. that either here. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, bro, you think Israel's bad? What we did in Iraq was really bad, bro. You're talking to two people who agree and who base their politics on the brutality of the Iraq war. They hate the neocons. They hate the war hawks. This is stuff they talk about all the time. And you're like, oh, yeah, you say Israel's bad. Well, we did some bad stuff, too, bro. Yeah, but you criticize it when it's the U.S. doing it, but you give it a total pass when Israel does it. Whereas Crystal will criticize when the U.S. does it and will criticize when Israel does it. She'll go after the U.S., she'll go after Israel, she'll call out the war crimes for what they are, and be specific about the details in both cases. Whereas you're like, U.S. did it really bad, bro. And then with Israel, he's like, I don't even, I, that's not even happening. I don't even know what you're talking about. Why are we just going after the Jews? Why, no, no, why, no, no, why, no, no. Oh, there it is. There it is. I don't know how far we're in here, maybe like 10 minutes or so into the discussion on Israel before. This is the first implied claim of anti-Semitism. What, Crystal, why are you just going after the Jews, bro? <laughs> Anti-Semitic much? Objectively talking about what Israel is doing as we speak? Anti-Semitism much? Are you a fan of Goebbels? Do you like Himmler? Do you worship Hitler, bro? She's kind of weird, Crystal. Kind of weird. Bobby, Israel does. We, well, let me just no, finish this because right now. Our tax dollars are going to fund what's going on. And the, uh, the visuals of these children being killed and losing their parents and the rubble and, you know, the total destruction. This is Listen, something our government I, is bad. I, I have friends, in, have I have friends in Gaza. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Yeah. RFK has got many friends in Gaza. For sure. By the way, notice, no response to what Crystal said. Why do you care? Why, why are you only going after the Jews, bro? Why are you going after Israel, bro? And she's like, we are arming and funding a genocide. <laughs> well, I have friends in Gaza, and maybe they like that they're being genocided, bro. Have you considered that? Brad was a father of five kids, and what he's living through right now is horrible. I have many, many Palestinian friends. I've been to West Bank. I've been met with the Palestinian leadership. I have, I, I, I love the Palestinian people. I have, 
it's excruciating what's watch, watching what's happened. But why are we blaming Israel? Why are we because blaming the people? Dropping the bombs. They have oh, to, our dollars. They have to get oh. it on us. They have oh, to run that back. Have. Did you hear her response? Oh, this is glorious. This is glorious. It's excruciating what's watch, watching what's happened. But why are we blaming Israel? Why are we because blaming the, the ones people? dropping the bombs? They have with to, our dollars. They <laughs> have to get it on us. They have to. Why are you blaming Israel, bro? They're the ones dropping the bombs. They're the one doing the ethnic cleansing. They're the one doing the genocide. They're the one bombing the mosques and the churches and the hospitals and the marketplaces and the apartment buildings and the roads and, and the women and the children and the grandmas and the aunts and that they're doing all of that. We're saying they are responsible for what they do. He's like, have you considered they're not responsible for what they do, bro? Think about that. And Hamas, unfortunately, built tunnels for themselves, but they did not build bomb shelters for their people. There are 30,000 Hamas in Gaza. There are 2.3 million Palestinians. When you do a total siege of over 2 million people and cut off the food, fuel, and water, and people need to drink seawater to survive, which we got reports of as like two weeks into the war, it is not a hunt for Hamas. It is not. When your best number for civilian death rate is 61% and the worst one is like 95% or 97%, that is not a hunt for Hamas. The, the fact that people keep insisting on going back, just like projecting the most benign and pure intentions onto Israel. When top Israeli government officials were like, we are now doing the Gaza Nakba. We don't think there are such things as innocent Palestinians. They voted for Hamas in 2006, so they're all guilty enough. We are bombing for damage, not accuracy. There's already talk about resettling Gaza. They've planted Israeli flags like every 20 or 30 feet in North Gaza. They put a big Israeli flag in the middle of Gaza City. Gee, I wonder what they're trying to tell the world. That they want to rebuild it and bring back in the Palestinians and give them equal rights? My ass cheeks. Stop being professionally stupid. This is professional stupidity. Anybody who is still pushing the idea that it's some sort of hunt for Hamas is totally disconnected from reality, ignoring all of the evidence and the proof on the ground right in front of your face that you could see every day if you look for it for 0.2 seconds. Israel has told people, move to the south. There's food trucks there. There's medicine there. There's, there's fuel not, there. But there's not. It's, the only, area, not, it's the, only not the there The area they Hamas told them to it. go to is an area that is the size of LAX airport. It is a desert wasteland. There are no UN flag facilities. In fact, if you ask the Secretary General of the UN, he'll tell you there are no safe places in Gaza. You already have 1.8 million people who have been displaced from their homes. So, you know, at what point do you say, OK, it's enough? Because the other piece of this, even if you say, and I know you're not saying this, I'm not putting, but even if you say I don't care about the Palestinian lives, they got to do what they got to do. It's the cost of war. What are you going to do? There's also a lot of evidence that what they're actually doing is fomenting increasing support for Hamas. Because if you think about it, you know, if you're a kid and your parents get blown up, what kind of politics do you think you're going to have when you grow up? Isn't that going to be tremendously radicalizing and incredibly compromising to the security of Israelis alike? She just absolutely dismantled him to his face. She just, that was, she just, she just gave a lesson to this man. That was brilliant to see. So how would you get rid of Hamas? Well, if you're uh, wait, swat aside every single thing she just said and be like, how would you get rid of Hamas? Watch this. This is probably my favorite part. Well, I'm not running for president of the United States, number one. But number two, I think we have a, a model for this, in a sense, from the way we went in and approached bin Laden. So it was a targeted raid. If you're actually going to do this, you do a counterterror operation where you go in, in a targeted way. You create a wedge between Hamas and the civilian population. And we see how this works in the past, because previously in Israeli society, when there were pathways to peace that were on the table, where the Palestinian civilian population felt that they had a chance at negotiating some sort of a peaceful outcome, guess what? Support for Hamas falls off a cliff. It's almost uh, okay, one-to-one Crystal, relationship with the more brutal Crystal, the response from is what, Israelis, what the more support for radicalism that there is. You can filibuster. I'm not filibustering. Uh, you asked me yeah. a question. I'm trying to answer it. Yeah. Oh, that is so frustrating. He asks her, well, what's your plan to get rid of Hamas? She gives a detailed plan, and he's like, why are you filibustering? I'm sorry, dude. You are just totally outmatched in this conversation. This is embarrassing. I, I think you're filibustering. You're not answering the question. You're saying drive did. a wedge. Well, of course Israel is trying to drive a wedge. 
by How's offering it? some other path that's well, not and terrorism, what is that and not path? violence. What is that path? It's a path to two-state solution or some sort okay. of a just and well, lasting peace. And, and, and the Palestinians not only have, have rejected that, but Hamas, its whole purpose was the, the reason. I can't. I can't. So he asked her quite, well, how would you get rid of Hamas? She gives a detailed and specific and accurate and correct, intelligent way of going about it. He just swats it all aside and acts like she didn't even answer the question. I mean, this is incredible to me. So look, I said this too. After October 7th, what do you do? Well, we know that most of the Hamas leaders are in Qatar and they're in Turkey. They're not in Gaza. Okay. So you go to Qatar, you go to Turkey, you go to the government, you say, how much? You bribe them, you pay them in order to, you go in there and arrest uh, the top Hamas guys, and you put them on trial, you bring them to the International Criminal Court, and even if they reject it or whatever, you send in the, the special forces and you put a bullet right between their eyes, because I'd rather have 12 dead top Hamas officials than 20,000 dead Palestinian civilians. That's the answer. Now, outside of that, what do you do? It's exactly what Jocko Willink laid out on uh, his podcast with the uh, Daryl Cooper, the guy who did the Martyr Made podcast, which is a great podcast on this exact topic, by the way. He says, yeah, you drive a wedge between the population and the leadership by going in there and doing tremendous amounts of humanitarian aid and building relationships on the ground. And then anybody who was directly involved with the Hamas attack, eventually they will turn them over to you if you show them, hey, we can provide a better life for you. There can be a lasting peace. But first and foremost, you got to give up the people who committed these atrocities. And then the most important part is at this point. You can, even though uh, Fatah, the Palestinian Authority, they have a lot of problems, they're viewed as Israeli collaborators, because they are, but you can say, we have no other leaders at the moment, what we'll do is, say the Palestinian Authority now also controls Gaza, and we'll make a deal with them, and then they get viewed as the heroes, so it's the peaceful path that worked, by going with the less militaristic approach, that's how Palestinians get a state, and then, it, it, we're in a much, much better situation. All of that is incredibly detailed, and it's like, people have thought this through. Right? There are other ways to go about it. Nothing is a perfect solution. But what's his response? His response is, I don't know, just let Israel keep doing what they're doing. Well, how does that look? How's that working? Like Crystal just said, there's evidence this is uh, raising support for Hamas. Uh, Hamas has like 80% approval rating in the West Bank now where they're not even in control. Why? Because they say, well, at least they fought back against the Israelis. Our leaders are collaborators with the Israelis. So, uh, Jesus Christ, man. And now he's going to do the standard tap dance of like, bro. Palestinians were offered a state, and they said no, it's on them. We'll come back to that in a second, because of course, the, the devil's in the details, and that is totally misleading. That Hamas was able to get all this popular support and, and, and take over was because of its, op its opposition to any negotiation. Hamas Israel, just, way, Hamas just Israel. came out and said that they support Israel's PLO and recognize Israel's right to exist. On the other hand, you, minute, have the, Crystal, you have the ambassador, I, I, I saw, but hold on, you have the Crystal, ambassador, just, the Israeli ambassador like of the you, UK just, saying we will Israel, absolutely hey, no to a two-state solution. I just cannot let like you tell that. It's just not true. It's just it. happened. I, he's so annoying. He's so annoying. Yes, of course, there are members of Hamas and there's uh, disagreements within Hamas. And they, of course, they did have the stuff in the charter about you know, uh, wipe the Jews out, uh, totally genocidal stuff. But then in 2017 and 2018, they said, we'll accept the 1967 borders and we actually don't have a problem with Jews, we have a problem with Zionists. So they've said both things at different times. It's all about the material conditions on the ground and where we are at this exact moment where there could be a pathway to peace or you could close it forever and have a, a permanent occupation and apartheid state or you could do an ethnic cleansing or a genocide. And he's like, I'll take the latter, please. Al Jazeera yesterday saying we're going to do this again and again and again. We will never negotiate. Which we covered. Now that's a lie. He said, oh, he's on TV yesterday saying this. He was on TV about a week or two weeks after October 7th, and he said that. That wasn't yesterday. That wasn't yesterday. Look how fast and loose he plays with the facts. Look how fast and loose he plays with the facts. But there's no, but what how, about the just, facts? But well, hold on. Well, what about, about the facts that, <laughs> what about the fact that Netanyahu and his government have said absolutely no. They built up Hamas to try to thwart any sort of Palestinian statehood. That's such an important point. Because this is a, a claim from the hard right Israel faction. They'll be like, Look, we offered them peace. They didn't want peace. That's on them. They're the hardliners. They're the ones who don't want to negotiate. This is at the exact same time that Netanyahu and Itamar Ben-Gavir and Likud and the other right-wing parties and all these people in top positions of power in uh, the Israeli government, they're saying, uh, we never want a two-state solution at all, ever. Netanyahu is bragging, I prevented the creation of a Palestinian state. Even the best deal that was on the table from Rabin was not actual sovereignty and independence. Israel controlled the airspace. Palestine was not able to have any sort of a right to self-defense, any sort of, uh, you know, total control within their own borders. It was less than a state, and that was them saying it. So they weren't actually offered a state. Now, on the contrary, 
At the UN, they bring up a vote all the time, almost every year, for a two-state solution along the 1967 borders. And guess who blocks it? The US and Israel. So tell me again, who's rejecting peace? Tell me again. For some reason, it sticks on Hamas when you say they don't want peace, but it never sticks on Likud. When they're very clearly saying, we don't want peace, we're doing the Gaza Nakba, we're not trying to be specific here, we're trying to do damage, there are no innocent civilians in Gaza. That stuff doesn't stick, but it always sticks when you say, well, Hamas doesn't want peace. I'm not defending Netanyahu. Mm. And I'm not, I, don't, I don't co-sign you know, what Netanyahu and Likud do. Israel is a divided country. You know, 80 or 20% of the population are on the street demonstrating against Netanyahu. What I'm saying is the Israeli, the Hamas, is a criminal enterprise. Sure. Yes. The, the Palestinian, and you, you talk about solutions for the Palestinian people. The yeah. Palestinian people are arguably the most pampered people by international aid organizations in the history of the world. You have a Kennedy talking about how pampered the Palestinians are. Your last name is Kennedy. Your last name is Kennedy. The Palestinians are pampered. The Israelis, quote unquote, put them on a diet. They control the amount of food, fuel, and water that they get. In Gaza, they have no control of their borders. There's a total blockade. It's an open-air prison. In the West Bank, it's permanent occupation and apartheid. Pampered. They're pampered. They're, they're, they're pampered even though they have no sovereignty, no independence, no rights whatsoever. They're pampered. They're pampered. Oh, even not. before this war, 78% of people in Gaza said they had you know, not enough food to eat. <laughs> Bro, minor details. Minor details. Let me guess. Let me guess his response. But Hamas, bro. But Hamas. Ready? Here we go. Why are you blaming well, Israel? In part, it's Hamas. And in part, it's the fact that Israel imposed a blockade and talked about putting them on a diet. If, you're, if your neighbor, first of all, Israel has no obligation. I mean, Israel built 3,000 hot houses and gave them for greenhouses. That would have made Gaza completely food self-sufficient. Gave it to them as a gift. Offered oh, to rebuild please. the port of Gaza to make it the Singapore of the West. Oh, please. But... Ariel Sharon, the guy who offered all this stuff, was a literal terrorist. He's called the Butcher of Beirut, okay? And again, pulling out the settlements from Gaza was just an attempt to do divide and conquer and take the West Bank and Gaza, separate them so you don't have a united Palestinian front. You have Fatah in the West Bank. You have Hamas in Gaza. And it's not like they did that and said, well, here's sovereignty. Here's a state. Here's human rights. No, they did that. And then they did a total blockade and embargo and controlled everything that goes in there and made it an open air prison. He's like, we're so magnanimous. We're looking out for you. We're on your side, Palestinians. Oh, my God. All right, I can't listen to any more of this. It's driving me crazy. He's a total, total psychopath. He's totally out to lunch. And Crystal dog walked his punk ass. And she did it simply by bringing up, like, basic facts about what's going on on the ground and then watch him squirm and try to talk his way out of it with pure sophistry. Honestly, it's pathetic. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.